begin the fifth lecture on the book of Hosea. Today's message focuses on Hosea 6, 4. Verse 4. Please read. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes early away. God is speaking to Israel and South Judah, who because of their sin are meeting their downfall. God is questioning them with a heavy heart. He says, What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? God said he should them if they only returned. He said he would give them grace time and time again. However, when God waited so long and they did not return, God says these things. We need to repent of our sins and return to God. Returning to God is the main subject of the book of Hosea. The verse says, Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes early away. Love here is hesed. It is a warm love for God and for brothers and sisters. Hesed still remained in them, but their love was like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes early away. When Israel's faith became corrupt, their actions also went bad. Yes, this is a believer who has lost love for God has a love that goes away like the morning dew. Unchanging love and affection must come from God's said and agape love. Our work and devotion for God will not last long if they are not grounded in a sincere spiritual walk with God. Making one's own resolutions and having courage will not be enough to practice unchanging love. This will only be irregular temporary love. Verse 5 Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and my judgment goes forth as the light. In this way God's people had turned away from God and had changed. Therefore, God scolds his people, his prophets. It is better when God admonishes us with his word or through certain situations. Therefore, we must feel guilty when we read the word. Also, we must return to God immediately after our conscience experiences guilt. We need to hear God's message through multiple incidents. When God warns us through His Word, we are able to obey God and return to Him without being harmed. But when we return after we have 
painful experiences we are hurting. God says, My judgment goes forth as the light. When we do not repent and return to God, God's judgment comes forth like a shining light. As God's word is unchanging, His words for judgment also do not. Thus, as God's love is unchanging, His judgment is unchanging. Verse 6 For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. God does not find joy in formal offerings. God finds more joy when we follow His will and love our brothers than when we give offerings. Jesus also refers to this message in Matthew chapter 9 verse 13. Jesus applied this message when he called Matthew the tax collector and he does this again in Matthew chapter 12 verse 7 when he passes through the grain fields on the Sabbath. Before we give our praise, prayer, and offerings in worship, we must first practice love, keep our righteousness, and protect our faith. God has said for him rather than sacrifices, and he wants us to know him rather than give burnt offerings. Knowing God will give us life. Knowledge of God is an important part of the message of Hosea. There are two sides to the knowledge about God. First, there is theological knowledge. This is about who God is, what He has done for Israel, and what He requires of His people. Thus, it is knowledge of the covenant. Hosea rebuked the priests and prophets who did not do their duties in teaching these things. The second is knowledge of the heart. It means responding personally to God's love and obeying the will of God in our lives. Hosea pointed out the fact that the Israelites lacked knowledge of God and had left this is the message of chapter 5 verse 4. Chapter 5 verse 4 says, Their deeds do not permit them to return to their God. For the spirit of whoredom is within them, and they know not the Lord. The verse says that they do not know the Lord, and they cannot return to God. Verse 7 But like Adam, they transgressed the covenant. There they dealt faithlessly with me. Straying from God's word and breaking the covenant leads to rebelling against God. When Adam sinned, he did not repent, but he blamed Eve, and he even blamed God. Adam said he ate the fruit because of the woman God created. Verse 8 Gilead is of evil to tract with blood. Gilead is a city of refuge. 
it was a place people went to if they unintentionally committed murder. People stayed here until the priest died. And when the priest died, they were given life. The priest had to die for them to find life. Gillian was a place that gave life through Christ. However, as the Israelites became corrupt, Gilead became a place of the wicked, a village of murderers. Their faith was decaying, and rules and laws were broken. Today, when we stray from God's word, we become like this. Verse 9 As robbers lie in wait, for a man, so the priests band together. They murder on the way commit villainy. Shechem was also a city of refuge. It was a play village for priests, but it became a place where thieves killed. The priests who were supposed to help the people in faith became murderers who killed people. The church is a place that takes care of God's people. When the church becomes corrupt, God's people are exploited. The Catholic Church of the Middle Ages did this. The Russian Orthodox Church did this as well. When the leader of the ministry becomes corrupt, believers are led down a road of sin. Therefore, there must be life at the church podium. That way, the church will live and the nation will have a future. This applies to the church in every country. We must have an interest in this subject and we must be people who pray. Verse 10 In the house of Israel I have seen a horrible thing. Ephraim's whoredom is there. Israel is defiled. God's people left God. They worshipped idols and fell into materialism. They followed pleasure and became detestable to God. The people who worshipped idols also fell into acts of physical adultery. Therefore, where idolatry is prevalent, a city becomes a place of sexual sin and debauchery. These people only had to do good on the outside. We are true believers who serve God. We must serve God in spirit and in truth. Verse 11 For you also, O Judah, a harvest is appointed of my people. God is speaking to the nation of South Judah. He is warning them through the destruction of the North. We need to learn lessons when we see other people fail, we need to receive the warning. When we see a church in need, we must learn a lesson. When we see a church of revival, we must learn from it. Today, Jesus' second coming is near. 
Scripture says there will be earthquakes, famine, and plague all over the world. Everything is happening as the Bible predicts. There was a big earthquake in Japan. Hundreds of thousands of people died because of the tsunami. The nuclear power plant was destroyed and many people are in pain because of it. Are happening in many places. Terrorist acts are happening everywhere. Also, there is the problem of nuclear weapons in several nations. When we see these difficult problems, we need to listen to God's warning. We need to think of Jesus' second coming. We must not put our hope in things of the earth. We need to think of our eternal home. When we live on this planet, we must seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Then we can defeat sin and live to pay back the grace of God. Now we will begin the lecture on Hosea chapter 7. The nation of Israel was under the reign of King Jeroboam II. Reign was powerful. It was a time of political and economic stability. The nation became rich due to trade. However, in God's eyes, it was a time of evil. To fix this problem, God sent several prophets. However, they were rejected and the people continued to act in evil. God then had to punish them. Jeroboam's son Zechariah was assassinated after six months of being king. If we look at 2 Kings chapter 15, Shalom, the man who killed Zechariah, becomes king but he is killed within one month. After that, Menahem, another evil man, became king and reigned for ten years. Menahem's son died after two years as king. Israel did not listen to God at this time. So it saw four regime changes in 13 years. Israel is attacked by Assyria and eventually destroyed. Today's message rebukes Israel for not returning to God. It is pointing out Israel's life apart from God. The message gives us a lesson as well. We must not repeat the mistakes of the Israelites. Verse 1. Please read. When I would heal Israel, the iniquity of Ephraim is revealed, and the evil deeds of Samaria for they deal falsely. The thief breaks in, and the bandits raid outside. Ephraim representative 
of the ten tribes of the north. Samaria is the capital of North Israel. North Israel's sin was revealed through its capital city and its representative tribe. They were committing sins that were cunning. Cunning means to deceive someone with lies. In order to steal from the poor and powerless, the king and his officials worked together to take away from the people. They stole from the people and made them miserable. They were stealing from people in groups. Verse 2 But they do not consider that I remember all their evil. Now their deeds surround them. They are before my face. Even when they did not fear God. Their sins were adding up, but they had no thought of returning to God. They were walking towards destruction. We need to understand that when sin adds up, there will be judgment. Verse 3 By their evil they make the king glad and the princes by their treachery. The officials flattered the king with lies and committed all sorts of evil acts. Lies and unlawfulness became routine for the king, the officials, and the people. In today's third world countries, many illegal activities are happening. There are bribes and unlawfulness in those countries. Must be honest and reward those who are righteous. He must also punish evildoers and be fair. But when the king becomes friends with those who do evil, he becomes an unjust king. When evil people flatter the king, he is unable to see it as flattery and accepts their words. Verse 4 They are all adulterers. They are like a heated oven whose baker ceases to stir the fire from the kneading of the dough until it is leavened. God says that they are all adulterers. A soul without God is like an adulteress. They are like a heated oven. An oven is a tool that is always burning quietly, is to prepare food. The verse is saying that Israel's sin may appear to be quiet, but when the opportunity comes, it burns a large fire of sin. Verse 5 On the day of our king, the princes became sick with the heat of wine. He stretched out his hand with mockers. 
In verses 5 to 7, God rebukes Israel's acts of conspiracy and of overturning kings. In verses 1 to 4, He rebuked them for their lies, stealing, and adultery. In Israel's corruption, the people celebrated birthdays and events with alcohol, and these parties brought prideful men together. When leaders and prideful men shake hands, a sign of nation's downfall. This is the same for any organization. Verse 6 For with hearts like an oven, they approach their intrigue. All night their anger smolders. In the morning it blazes like a flaming fire. A heart that holds sin is like a smoldering oven that blazes like a fire in the morning. This means the sinful nature of the people of Israel will not be fixed. We must get rid of any potential sin within us. If we do not do this, the sin will rise up again. Verse 7 All of them are hot as an oven, and they devour their rulers. All their kings have of them calls upon me. The burning sin had consumed unrighteous kings and corrupt priests. Their deep sin had eventually consumed the people. They had come to a place where they would kill each other in endless political change. Even then, no one called out to God. Someone must call out to God when a generation becomes sinful. However, the Israelites put their faith in people and things, and no one repented before God. In verses 8 to 12, God says He will punish Israel for mixing with the people. Verse 8 Ephraim mixes himself with the peoples. Ephraim a cake not turned. The verse says Ephraim is a cake not turned. The Israelites served God, but at the same time they mixed with foreign nations. They served both the world and God. The Israelites relied on Assyria's military power and Egypt's material abundance. That is why Israel became a cake not turned. A cake is a thin baked bread. When baking a cake, it must be flipped on each side. However, a cake not turned is well baked on one side but the other side is still raw. 
it cannot be eaten. North Ephraim was in this condition. It relied on God only one. On the other side, Ephraim was relying on foreign nations. It is like the adulteress who is rejected by both sides. In worldly eyes, Egypt was a better place to live than Canaan. Living in Egypt means living for this world, but living in Canaan means looking to God. There is happiness, strength, and freedom when we live for God. We need to become people and a church that God can use. To do so, we must put God and the Word at the center of our lives. By following the Word of God, we must look back on our sins and repent. Also, we need to see a real change in our lives. When we do this, we can live holy lives the way Jesus lived. Verse 9 Strangers devour his strength, and he knows it not. Gray hairs are sprinkled upon him, and he knows it not. Israel followed both Egypt and Assyria. Israel, instead of receiving help from these nations, was consumed by Egypt and Assyria. Even then, they did not realize they were doing wrong. Israel relied on Assyria. Israel formed a military alliance with Assyria, and Assyria demanded unreasonable tributes. Because of the tributes, Israel's power rapidly declined. If Israel had relied, it would not have spent any money. However, <clears throat> Israel tried to handle things in human ways. Israel did this, but it lost money and became weak. Israel <coughs> had become a, like a stressed person whose hair was turning white. Israel had become old inside and powerless. We must remember that when we fall into the things of the world, we are walking down a path of destruction whether we realize it or not. We become like a frog in a pot of water. The frog stays still as the water gets warmer, but it eventually dies from the high temperature. Such is the result some is like a cake not turned. A believer must not rely on the world. We need to go forward by relying on God. Then our faith becomes stronger. We find strength in God's Word 
and the Holy Spirit is with us. Verse 10 The pride of Israel testifies to his face, yet they do not return to the Lord their God, nor seek him for all this. Israel did not return to God because of pride. The verse says the pride of Israel testifies to his faith face. Pride is a big problem. Pride is doing something with one's own strength without the help of God. A prideful person does not humble himself before God. We need to return to God in fasting and repentance. If we do not return to God, we cannot be saved. God is the Almighty God, the God of promises and the living God. God gave His own Son as a sacrifice for our sins. He adopted us as His own people. God adopted us as His children. He also promises us eternal life with Him in heaven. We need to return to God and seek His mercy. We need to trust in His help and His promises in our lives. That is when God will help us. Verse 11 Ephraim is like without sense calling to Egypt, going to Assyria. Please read verse 12 as well. As they go, I will spread over them my net. I will bring them down like birds of the heavens. I will discipline them according to the report made to their congregation. Verse 11 says, Ephraim is like a dove, silly and without sense. A silly dove flies into a field without knowing there is a net waiting for it. In its greed for food, the bird falls into the net and dies. Israel followed Egypt seeking to gain good things. However, the Israelites did not know there was a net waiting for them. They were caught the net. People who trust in the world cannot find satisfaction or happiness. They are led astray by worldly things. These people are similar to men who seek many women. We must not be tempted by the beautiful things of the world. When we follow the things of the world, we end up falling down. Great strength, beauty, happiness, satisfaction, freedom, peace, nobility, and life are all found in God. God does not punish or bless us according to emotions. 
He is a just God. Verses 13 to 16 rebuke those who practice ritualism. Verses 13 to 14 Woe to them, for they have strayed from me to them, for they have rebelled against me. I would redeem them, but they speak lies against me. They do not cry to me from the heart, but they wail upon their beds. For grain and wine they gash themselves. They rebel against me. The Israelites prayed to God and repented of their sins whenever they faced trouble. They were not sincerely crying out to God. They only cried out to God when they were sick, so that they may be healed. As a temporary solution to their hunger, they prayed to God for food. The core problem was that their hearts were away from God, but they did not try to fix the problem. The Israelites only wanted God to solve their problems. For these people there is no salvation but destruction and fire. God wanted to save them, but because their hearts did not seek God, God could not save them. God is not deceived by our actions. He wants us to have a proper conscience and to restore our faith. We must always seek His kingdom first. Verses 15 to 16 Although I trained and strengthened their arms, yet they devise evil against me. They return but not upward. They are like a treacherous bow. Their princes shall fall by the sword because of the insolence of their tongue. This shall be their derision in the land of Egypt. God had trained Israel in many ways for a long time. He trained them for four in, and he strengthened their arms during the time of the judges. The purpose was to strengthen their arms to shoot arrows that would hit their targets. However, Israel used its arms to do evil. The arrows they shot did not shoot upward but went to the wrong places. Here, we must understand one thing. When God trains us and strengthens our arms, we must use the strength for the right purposes. And as God's arrows, we need to be ready to go wherever God wants us to go. We need to do the work of God that fulfills His will. We need to go into God's hands and go wherever He sends us. Why did God give us a nice house, a good environment, and a good education? He wants us to be His that do the work. God. This ends the fifth lecture on the Minor Prophets. Thank you.